learned about the strength of acids and bases acids and bases are classified as strong acids weak acids strong bases and weak bases now in this topic we have to concentrate on weak acids and weak bases now the extent of ionization is determined on the basis of value of alpha what is alpha degree of ionization and it can be calculated by using the formula number of moles ionized at equilibrium divided by total number of moles again the strength of acid and base can be determined on the basis of value of ka and kb k if it is large then the acid is stronger if it is less then the acid is weaker kb if the value of kb is large then the base is stronger and if the value of kb is less then the base is weaker so in this video we shall learn what is oswald dilution law oswald dilution law gives the relation between degree of ionization and concentration of a solution of weak acid or weak base and so what is the derivation or uh, derivation for the relation between degree of ionization and concentration of weak acid we will learn in detail and concentration of weak base i will explain you here in this video what is the relation between degree of ionization alpha and concentration of the solution it was explained by the scientist oswald and it is called as oswald's dilution law the mathematical expression between alpha and c it was given by the scientist oswald and it is called as oswald dilution law remember that oswald dilution law is applicable only for weak electrolytes it is not applicable for strong electrolytes what are weak electrolytes now you know weak acids and weak bases are weak electrolytes so remember oswald dilution law is applicable only for weak acids and weak bases and it gives the relation between degree of ionization and concentration of weak acid or concentration of weak base at constant temperature what is the relation between these we have to consider for that first we shall take weak acid you know that in general any acid is represented by ha suppose ha is a weak acid here we will take one mole of ha how can you take one mole of any substance for that we have to calculate the molar mass of that substance that is here we have to calculate the molar mass of ha how it is calculated it is atomic mass of h plus atomic mass of a for example suppose we have cs3cooh acetic acid you can calculate molar mass of this it is equal to 60 so 60 g of acetic acid is equal to 1 mole like this any acid weak acid is taken and it is taken 1 mole like this and it is dissolved in water and solution is prepared the volume of the solution which is prepared it is suppose vdm cube vdm cube is the volume of the solution now you know concentration of the solution can be calculated by using the formula number of moles divided by volume of solution in dm cube so c for concentration for this solution is equal to number of moles 1 divided by volume of the solution v and so for this solution c is equal to 1 upon v now when ha is dissolved in water here it will ionize to give h plus and a minus ions as it is weak acid it cannot be completely ionized here there are undissociated ha molecules and h plus ions and a minus ions are present in this solution now initially we have taken one mole and here the ha goes on ionizing to give h plus and a minus ions now you can apply law of mass action here and write down the expression for equilibrium constant for this reaction where ka is called as dissociation constant of acid and therefore ka is equal to concentration of h plus into concentration of a minus divided by concentration of ha 
now in this expression remember that all these concentrations are at equilibrium that is the concentration of h plus a minus and concentration of h a are at equilibrium we don't know what is the concentration of h plus a minus and h a at equilibrium for that suppose alpha is the degree of ionization for this solution what is alpha it is the fraction of total number of moles ionized at equilibrium so initially we have taken one mole and alpha moles are ionized that means alpha is equal to number of moles ionized suppose we don't know what are the number of moles ionized suppose they are x moles number of moles which are taken initially one mole so x upon 1 is the value of alpha that is degree of ionization here x upon 1 that is equal to x so alpha is equal to x what is alpha number of moles ionized at equilibrium so x moles are ionized at equilibrium with no like this now we can determine what is the concentration of h plus a minus and concentration of h a by using this table see here suppose we have this reaction h a gives h plus plus a minus initial moles how many moles we have taken initially initially we have taken one mole of ha it is dissolved in water suppose the reaction is not started there is ionization is not started therefore h plus ions are zero moles a minus ions are zero moles now ha goes on ionizing and the equilibrium condition is reached how many moles at equilibrium are remaining now we have said that alpha moles are ionized so how many moles of ha are remaining 1 minus alpha moles one moles are taken initially alpha moles are ionized so the remaining number of moles of ha are 1 minus alpha as alpha moles are ionized how many moles of h plus will be obtained alpha moles how many moles of a minus will be obtained alpha moles so at equilibrium number of moles of ha are 1 minus alpha number of moles of h plus are alpha and number of moles of a minus are alpha now what is the concentration at equilibrium of all these terms now you know that concentration is equal to number of moles upon volume in dm cube and so here 1 minus alpha upon v alpha upon v and alpha upon v like this at equilibrium concentration of h plus is equal to alpha upon v concentration of a minus is equal to alpha upon v and concentration of h a is equal to 1 minus alpha upon v if you substitute these values in the equation for ka now you can obtain ka is equal to concentration of h plus that is alpha upon v into concentration of a minus alpha upon v divided by concentration of h a 1 minus alpha upon v that is equal to alpha square upon v square right into 1 minus alpha upon v it is divided by and so you can say here into 1 my v upon 1 minus alpha like this here this v v will be cancelled it is equal to alpha square upon 1 minus alpha into v now again 1 upon v is equal to c as now equation number 1 and therefore you can say ka is equal to alpha square c upon 1 minus alpha this is actual oswald dilution law but for practical use it is modified 1 minus alpha here remember value of alpha is very less for weak acid value of alpha is less and so 1 minus alpha is nearly equal to 1 and therefore this value is taken as 1 remember here alpha is very very less so 1 minus alpha it is nearly equal to 1 and so ka is equal to alpha square c k is dissociation constant of acid alpha is degree of ionization and c is concentration of the solution again in terms of alpha you can say alpha is equal to c here c will be taken here and the square root of it so alpha is equal to square root of ka upon c now here k a is constant it is modified equilibrium constant and you know 
equilibrium constant is constant at constant temperature and so if temperature is constant this value is constant and so the relation between alpha and c can be said like this alpha is inversely proportional to square root of concentration at constant temperature and so the statement for oswald dilution law is like this at constant temperature degree of ionization of weak acid is that inversely proportional to square root of concentration here again 1 upon c is equal to v and so it can be stated like this also root k into v and therefore here degree of ionization is directly proportional to square root of volume of the solution it is also said like this and again which i will repeat here degree of ionization of weak acid is inversely proportional to square root of concentration at constant temperature or degree of ionization is directly proportional to square root of volume at constant temperature like this this can be applied for weak base also what will the be change in the weak base here only we have to change H A we will replace by B O H. Here, how B O H will ionize? It will ionize to give B plus plus O H minus. B B O H will give you B plus plus O H minus. The same procedure is repeated. That is, we have taken one mole of B O H. It is dissolved in V D M cube of so uh, v d uh, solution uh, or it is dissolved in water and v d m cube of solution is obtained and therefore initial moles of b o h is 1 b plus 0 o h minus 0 moles at equilibrium will be again 1 minus alpha 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 concentration at equilibrium same and here what will be happen here concentration of o h minus is equal to alpha upon v concentration of B plus is equal to alpha upon V and concentration of B O H is equal to one minus alpha upon V. Like this, the procedure will be repeated again. Here only the difference will be K A is replaced by K B, and therefore K B is equal to alpha upon V into alpha upon V one minus alpha upon V. Like this, here the in the last step alpha is equal to root. K B upon C or alpha is equal to root K B into V, and so you can say for weak base also the degree of ionization is inversely proportional to square root of concentration at constant temperature, or it is directly proportional to square root of volume at constant temperature. By using this equation, if you know the value of K A which is constant at constant temperature or value of K B. you can determine value of alpha at if you know the concentration of the solution or vice versa like if you know the value of alpha you can determine what is the value of ka or kb by using this equation we can also determine what is the concentration of h plus or concentration of oh minus in this solution you remember that concentration of h plus is equal to alpha upon v Our concentration of O H minus is equal to alpha upon V, but concentration of solution for that we don't know what is volume. Concentration term is expressed, and therefore concentration of H plus is equal to alpha into C. See here, concentration of H plus is equal to alpha into C. How concentration of H plus is equal to alpha into Into C, alpha upon V, one upon V is concentration, and so remember that concentration of H plus for weak acid is equal to alpha into C. What is C? C is concentration of the solution, and concentration of the solution is not equal to concentration of H plus ion for weak acid. It is different, and it depends upon value of alpha. And so remember for weak acid. concentration of h plus is equal to alpha into c or it can be given as it is equal to root ka into c if you substitute the value of alpha in value of ka you can obtain this relation and so remember that 
फॉर वीक एसिड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एच प्लस इज इक्वल टू रूट के ए इंटू सी और अल्फा इंटू सी लाइक दिस फॉर वीक बेस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ ओ एच माइनस इज इक्वल टू अल्फा इंटू सी और रूट के बी इंटू सी लाइक दिस वी कैन डिटरमाइन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एच प्लस इफ यू नो द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सोल्यूशन एंड वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा and concentration of oh minus for weak base if you know the concentration of the solution of that weak base and value of alpha today we have learned oswald dilution law remember oswald dilution law is applicable only for weak electrolytes that is weak acids and weak bases it is very important it is applicable only for weak acids and weak bases It is not applicable for strong acids, strong bases, and salts. Remember here. Now, according to this law, degree of ionization of weak acid or weak base is inversely proportional to square root of concentration, or it is directly proportional to square root of volume of the solution. By using this derivation, we have derived the equations as Ka, that is, dissociation constant of acid is equal to alpha square c or alpha is equal to square root of k upon c kb that is for weak base is equal to alpha square c or alpha is equal to square root of kb upon c concentration of h plus for weak acid is equal to alpha into c or square root of k into c and for weak base concentration of oh minus is equal to alpha into c or square root of kb into c in the next video by using these equations we shall solve some problems